RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents the Phil Harris Salas Bay Show. For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. There are lots of ways of getting in good with your boss. Strange that Phil has never found one of them. But tonight he faces danger bravely to win Mr. Scott's goodwill. More about that later, but first a word from RCA Victor. Listen carefully. Here's the news you've been waiting for. Now you can buy a super set at the lowest price ever and still enjoy all the quality and performance which is traditionally RCA Victor's. Stop in at your RCA Victor dealers tomorrow and let him show you the Colby, for example, a 17-inch table model at only $229.95. Or choose the beautiful Selfridge Ensemble. It's 21-inch television for only $379.50. And all these prices are complete. They include federal excise tax, full year warranty on the picture tube, and no extra charge for your favorite finished mahogany. Yes, listen carefully. RCA Victor prices on supersets are lowest ever. So take advantage of it now. Get a great new superset made by RCA Victor, cornerstone of home entertainment for three generations. Now the stars of the RCA Victor program, Alice Faye and Phil Harris. <laughs> Last night, Phil's sponsor, Mr. Scott, had a dinner party at his home for the cast of the RCA Victor radio show. It was rather a hectic affair, and as we look in this morning, we find a dazed Mr. and Mrs. Scott at their breakfast table. Oh, what a horrible party that was last night. Clyde. Oh? <laughs> why did you have to invite Mr. Harris's musicians? Why, why, why? Stop nagging and get me some fresh ice cubes for my head. <laughs> oh, have I got a hangover. How could you have a hangover? You didn't drink. I didn't have to. One of the musicians breathed on me. <laughs> I wonder if the skin will ever grow back on my face. <laughs> I never saw anything like the way those musicians eat. They're nothing but cannibals. Oh, I never saw such table manners. Clyde, tighten the tourniquet on my arm. Hasn't it stopped bleeding yet? <laughs> no. No, I just managed to get the last fork out. <laughs> Clyde, how does my arm look? Like a punch board <laughs> They all acted like pigs But one of them was particularly horrible Which one? Frankie Remley <laughs> Horror, please Do you have to use such vile language so early in the day? <laughs> Thank goodness my mother stayed in her room And didn't have to see those people She'd have been so shocked She'd have packed her things and gone back to Hackensack <laughs> Would she? <laughs> Honestly? We could have them back again and Never start... mind. <laughs> you love my mother and you know it. If you say so, dear. <laughs> I'm really glad the old girl didn't see those musicians. It probably would have driven her right Good out of... Good morning, her... children. Oh. Good morning, mother. My, that was quite a party you had last night. Such charming people, especially those young men. Oh, they were adorable. <laughs> adorable? Mother, one more remark like that and we're going to have to put you back in the attic. <laughs> Mother, how did you see them? I thought you were going to stay in your room last night. Oh, I peeked out just once or twice. <laughs> they didn't see me. You're lucky. You might have been torn <laughs> limb from limb. Cora, we'd better go. We, we have to be at the bank in an hour. I'm ready, Clyde. Oh, by the way, Mother, in the melee last night, my wristwatch was broken. Somehow the clasp on my necklace was dented. I called Maurice the jeweler, and he's coming over later to pick them up and repair them. Very well, dear. In the meantime, I'll put them in the wall safe. Well, just to make sure Maurice doesn't forget, will you call him later and remind him to pick up the jewels? 
I'll see you tonight, Mother. <laughs> Thale, I'll never forgive your musicians for what they did at the Scots last night. It was the most horrible display of ill breeding I've ever seen. Oh, it wasn't that bad. Boys just had a couple of drinks and a few laughs. They got a little gay. <laughs> I had a wonderful time. How about you, Remley? I thought it was great. Wonder how the rest of the boys in the band enjoyed themselves. I don't know. Let's call the emergency hospital and find out. <laughs> Ended up in the emergency hospital? All of them? All those that weren't killed. <laughs> I hope Bobby the trumpet player was thoughtful enough to will me his full length suede coat. <laughs> you know, Phil, every one of your boys should be ashamed of the way he behaved. Suppose you didn't like the way I behaved either. No, I have no criticism of you, Frankie. Mm. You are nice and subdued. You didn't run around and shout or chase any women or get into arguments with anybody. You were very quiet. You just lay there all evening. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll never be able to face Mrs. Scott again after what Sammy the drummer did. Now, wait a minute. Sammy's behavior was beyond reproach. It was, huh? Then how come during dinner he sneaked up behind Mrs. Scott and kissed her on the nape of the neck? He wasn't kissing her. He was just trying to bite open the clasp on her necklace. <laughs> you see, Alice, I told you, he's the perfect gentleman. The guy oh, would... by the way, Phil, did you happen to notice that beautiful pearl necklace Mrs. Scott was wearing? Yeah. I've never seen a dame with so many jewels. Besides the pearl necklace, she had on amethyst earrings, an emerald bracelet, a sapphire comb, and diamond bicycle clips. <laughs> bicycle clips? Oh, Phil, she was wearing an ankle bracelet. Well, I loved her platinum wristwatch set with diamonds and sapphires. I like the ruby she wore on her nose. <laughs> that wasn't a ruby. She was eating a tomato. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Scott overdoes everything. Them jewels were bad enough, but all that gold she had in her teeth was a little ostentatious. <laughs> Gold in her teeth? That's because you weren't sitting opposite her during dinner. Could you really notice it? Notice Bill? it. Every time she opened her mouth to talk, it looked like a blinker light on a battleship. <laughs> oh, For a while, I thought she was trying to flirt with me in Morris Code. <laughs> you know, I think Mrs. Scott. You know, Phil, Mrs. Scott is very foolish to wear all that expensive jewelry. Someday somebody is going to steal it from her. And Phil. Bill, I think you ought to call Mr. Scott and apologize for the way the boys in your band acted last night. I really Yeah, do. I guess maybe you're right, honey. Because I should keep in good with my sponsor. Why? <laughs> Why? Because I'm happy with RCA Victor. They're a wonderful sponsor and they make great products. And it's about time you realized it. I realize it. I realize it. The stuff that they make is good. Not just good, great. Do you know that RCA Victor has been the cornerstone of home entertainment for three generations? So don't knock their product. I'm not knocking it. In fact, I wouldn't think of building a home without an RCA cornerstone. <laughs> <laughs> their cornerstones are made of the best cement that money can buy. Friendly. Here, face me. What? I'm going to tell you once more. RCA Victor makes television sets, radios, records, and record players. Well, I'm glad they branched out. <laughs> Bigger market for that than Cornerstone. Will you stop already? <laughs> hey, Alice, you're right. I'd better call Scotty and apologize. Uh, what's his home phone number? RCA 4726. <laughs> He's got his own exchange letters? Mm -hmm. How big can you get? Hey, I'll go in and call Scotty. Yeah, I'll go with you, Curly. There are a few things I want to tell him. Oh, Frankie, please, come back here. What do you want? Don't go with Phil. Why don't you stay here with me? Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> I know you blondes. You get an innocent boy like me alone, you try to take advantage of me. I just want to sing to you. That's what I mean. All right, I'll listen. You go ahead and sing. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
Down yonder someone beckons to me Down yonder someone reckons on me I seem to see a racing memory Between the Natchez and the Robert E. Lee What is sure I miss you more and more Every day my sunny land You're simply grand Down yonder when the folks get the news Don't wander at the hullabaloo There's Daddy and Mammy There's Ephraim and Sammy Waiting down yonder for me Nice cakes, Mammy Bates We taste them now There's lots of kissing and ha Down yonder someone beckons to me Aha! Down yonder someone reckons on me I seem to see a race in memory Between the Natchez and the Robert E. Lee Swanee Shore, I miss you more and more Every day in my sunny land You're simply grand Down, down Do yonder it. when the folks get the news Don't, don't wonder at the hullabaloos There's Daddy and Mammy There's Johnny and Franny There's Liza and Willie There's Sally and Millie Waiting down yonder for Waiting down yonder for Waiting down yonder for me What's the matter? Hey, I tried to call Mr. Scott, but there's something wrong with our phones. Dead. Won't work. That's strange. Maybe the, maybe the receiver is broken. Maybe there's a loose wire. Maybe he didn't pay your phone bill. <laughs> this is no time to be funny. Do you realize that we're out of phone? So? What do you mean, so? Do you realize we can't call anybody if we need something? Oh, take it what easy. What do you mean, take it easy? We're cut off from the outside world. We have no contact with civilization. We're marooned. Marooned! <laughs> Oh, no, what a horrible way to go. Frankie. Cut off from everything. Yeah. The nearest house, 30 feet away. <laughs> We're stranded here in this 58-room mansion with nothing to keep us warm except Alice's minks and sables. Yeah. All right, Frankie. And we'll starve. There's nothing to eat here except steaks and chops and caviar and patty de foie gras. And nothing to drink. Nothing to drink but pink champagne. And nowhere to pink champagne. Mom's thank you. Got a good vintage here? Good vintage, it was the best. Well, then let's continue with the hysterics. Go ahead. Oh, take the it. pang, the thirst. Yes, my throat is so parched. It'll take at least a mangum to wet it down. Ooh. Oh, the agony of oh, I keep quiet. Well, then open one bottle, will you? <laughs> you just wait here. I'll go next door and call the phone company. Oh. Heaven's sake. Killjoy. Yeah, she can't stand to see us enjoy our suffering. One little split, maybe, a cold wine. Yeah. <laughs> Why do women get so panicky? Alice didn't have to go next door to call the phone company. Then who's going to get the phone fixed? <laughs> <laughs> get it, Mr. Bell? <laughs> It's coming my way now, Alexander. <laughs> we fix it. Well, sure. Nothing to fix in a phone. Nah. Shall we have a go at it? Well, yes, let's. Let me see now. Phone itself looks all right. Trouble must be in the wire that leads into the wall. Wire's probably loose. I'll pull it and see. <coughs> you better give me a hand, Curly. Yeah, okay. Come on. I was right. The wire was loose. <laughs> then why did I get a hernia? what you did. You pulled the wired part of the wall out, Remley. Well, put a chair in front of it. Nobody will notice it. <laughs> the wiring must be faulty in back of the baseboard. Now, what? I'll have to pull a little piece of the baseboard huh? away to get at the wire. Remley, I don't think you no, should... Please, please, please. Oh, I know you... what I'm doing. Now, just pull a little piece away, like so. <laughs> no. Wires are okay here. Must be further along. Wait a minute, Remley... Frankie, I don't think that... 
Frankie. Remley, come back. You worked your way into the bathroom. <laughs> I'm sorry, Curly. I was so engrossed to my work, I didn't realize I was in the bathroom. Well, didn't you see Willie taking a bath in there? Oh, is that what he was doing? I thought he was lying in a porcelain casket. <laughs> <laughs> While you were ripping up the whole house, I found this loose wire. Look, it's right here in the living room. Oh. See where all those wires are? Yeah. Well, look at there. See, one of them's hanging down. Well, let me have it. I'll have it fixed in no time. All I got to do is connect this wire to one of them other wires. Yeah, yeah, but to which one? Well, what difference? Wires is wires. <laughs> I'll just splice these two wires together like this. I'll twist them around a few times. There you are. Good boy. Now let's walk into the hall and see if the phone's working. What do you mean, see if it's working? When I fix something, I fix it. There's your phone, Curly. Try it. Okay, I'll see if it's... it. Remley, hmm? why is the phone hissing at me? <laughs> I ain't done nothing to it. And why are them blue sparks shooting out of it? Why ask me? I'm not Don Amici. Remley. <laughs> You connected the electric wires to the phone wires. Do you know a guy can get electrocuted if he touches that phone? Oh, Curly, you can not. I say you can. Well, there's only one way to settle this argument. How? You pick up the phone, we'll see Wait what's a minute, right. will you stop? <laughs> I wouldn't touch that hot box with rubber gloves. Well, somebody's got to try it to see if we attached it to the electric yeah, wire. Yeah, but there ain't nobody going to be stupid enough to Everybody go pick... Everybody home? I brought the groceries. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Remley. Huh? Here comes little Fuse face. <laughs> yeah, 30 amp Julius. <laughs> we'll get him to pick up the phone. No, Curly, it's liable to be electrified. <laughs> so what? A little shock treatment might bring him back to life. <laughs> what are you guys up to? Why is all that wood lying around on the floor? Oh, um, I ripped the baseboard away. What are you doing? Looking for your wife's money? <laughs> Uh, Julius, you got here just in time. There's a phone call for you. Oh, thanks, Mr. Remley. Hand me the phone. Okay. <laughs> that ain't the way it's supposed to go. Hey, Julius, answer your own phone. Okay. Just a minute, Mac. If there's a phone call for me, why is the receiver still on the hook? Well, I... T <laughs> Excuse me, kid, we gotta talk this over. <laughs> Look, we've been ambushed by the enemy. Now, how do we get out of this? Look, Curly, listen. Just tell him that you wanted to... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Good. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, now, what was your question again, Julius? I said if there's a phone call for me, why is the receiver still on the hook? You got a telegram a few minutes ago saying there was a phone call for you. <laughs> and I gave the messenger a tip. You owe me 35 cents. Ramley. <laughs> what are you trying to do? Get him to pay for his own electrocution? <laughs> uh, go ahead, Julius. Answer the phone. Okay. At last. <laughs> Hold everything. Why is the phone hissing? I wondered when he'd get around to that. Uh, now, why a blue spot? Shooting out of it. Oh, uh, the name on our party line is having a spicy conversation. <laughs> Go ahead, Julius, answer it. Oh, I don't answer it. Stand back, Remley. He's liable to come popping up like a piece of bread out of a toastmaster. <laughs> I hope he comes out light, otherwise we'll have to scrape him. <laughs> Just turn around. I can't bear to watch this. Fellas, please, I won't be able to hear if you keep talking. Quiet. Hello? Hello? Mr. Harris? Mr. Harris, I'm talking to you. Are you still alive? <laughs> Friendly, he didn't get electrocuted. Electrocuted? What's the matter with you guys? Now look, kid. Wait till I tell my old man you tried to barbecue me little spare ribs. <laughs> hmm. Well, Frankie, now that we know that the phone is safe, I'm going to call Scotty. Oh, good. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to apologize for our behavior last night. I'll tell him that you know, that I'm sorry about what happened. Yeah. Hello? Hello? Hey, that's funny. The phone didn't ring, but I can hear a woman talking to a guy. Hey, maybe it's the dame on your party line, Curly. Let me listen. Oh, wait a minute, Remley. Wait a minute. Hey. Hmm? 
This is coming from the Scots house. Quiet. What? Wait a minute. Holy smoke. What? Oh, them dirty crooks. What? They're not going to get away with this. What, what's the matter, Remy, Curly? some dame and some guy named Maurice are planning to steal Mrs. Scott's jewels. No! Yeah. The dame told this Maurice that the Scots were out and that she had just gotten the jewels out of the wall safe, and he's supposed to come over and get them right away. Well, if the dame called from there, sounds like an inside job. Sure, she must be the housekeeper. Curly, it's up to us to foil this nefarious plot. We ain't got no time for that. <laughs> First, we gotta stop the robbery. <laughs> Let's call a cop. Why call the cops? Why don't we go over oh, there oh, and then we can... Bill, I call the phone company and... Hey, what's the matter? You look so excited. Excited? Alice, listen to this. We overheard a plot to steal Mrs. Scott's jewels, and we're going to stop it. Oh, that's awful. Did you call the police? No, oh, we're going to capture the crooks ourselves, and in that way, we'll get in good with Scotty again. Come on, everybody. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, here's the Scott's house. What we do now, Curly? Shh, shh, quiet. Now, let's tiptoe up to the window and see what's going on. Come on, Alice. Now, no noise, anybody. Shh. Hey. Hey, look, see, I was right. Look, that old dame is handing the jewels over to the guy. Oh, what are we going to do, Phil? Well, there's only one thing to do. Let's crash right in and capture him. But, Phil, the man is probably armed. Yeah, you're right. Hey, we gotta be careful. Yeah. Remley. Yeah. You stay here at the window. I'll go around the back. And Alice. Yeah? You go in and take the gun away from that guy. <laughs> that's what I like. A brave husband. It isn't what I've got, but that's what I like. <laughs> now, Curly, don't worry. I happen to have a gun with me. Good boy. I... What gun? My sleeve derringer. <laughs> You need it when you play cards with musicians. Oh, no. <laughs> Good, now look. Let's just open this window and then get them. Now, don't forget, Maurice. You take the jewels. All right, you two, don't move. We got you covered. Oh, my goodness. What's the meaning of this? Never mind, Dad. Hand over them jewels. You can't get away Why? with it. Why? Alice, take them jewels. Got them, Chief. <laughs> I hope we're not making a mistake. The old lady doesn't look like a criminal. What are you talking about? She's got a criminal face if I ever saw one. Look at them beady eyes. <laughs> Low slung jaw, the receding chin. Look at them tattoos on her legs. <laughs> Curly, those are veins. <laughs> they are? I could have sworn they spell love, same. <laughs> The man doesn't look like a crook either. Of course I'm not. I'm Maurice, the jeweler. A likely story. Remley, yes. lock this guy in a closet. Right. Well, what are you going to do with the old lady? She looks dangerous. Here, Alice, hold the gun on her while I tie her up. Don't right. you dare. If you so Quiet much... Quiet or I'll be forced to gag you, too. But I tell you, I'm Mrs. Scott's mother. All right, you asked for it. Now hold still while I tie you. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. An old lady like you stealing. Can't you live on your social security? <laughs> <laughs> or your relief check like my mother does? <laughs> there, she's tied up. Oh, wait till Mr. Scott finds out what I just well, done, boy. Cora, I'm, I'm certainly glad to be oh, home. Oh, Mr. Scott, am I glad you're here. Harris, what are you doing in my house? How did you get in here? I came in through the window. The window? Well, don't act so surprised, dear. <laughs> Last night, some of them were coming out of the woodwork. <laughs> Mr. Scott, you ought to be lucky that I got here. I prevented a robbery. What robbery? An armed crook was in the act of stealing your wife's jewelry. And without any thought of my personal safety, I rushed in and single-handed overpowered this dangerous desperado. What desperado? That old lady tied up in the chair. <laughs> well, good work, Harris. She does look like a crafty criminal with a... Mother! <laughs> you mean this old crook is your mother? This old crook is my mother. No, 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 I, I mean she's my mother. Oh, no! <laughs> Clyde, untie my mother and take that gag out of her mouth. Very well, dear. I'll untie her and I... Couldn't I leave the gag in? <laughs> <laughs> no! Oh, oh, all right. There we are. Oh, there. Oh, 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 
your children. I'm so glad you're home. These three crooks held me up and stole your jewels. Oh, I don't think they'd do that. If you don't believe me, look at that woman. She has a gun in one hand and the jewels in the other. Miss Hay, you a jewel thief? Mr. Scott, I... So that's how you got all your money. <laughs> How can I tell him? I don't know how you got to. <laughs> Asking about the robbery. Tell him why I'm standing here with the gun and the oh, jewels. Oh, the, oh that. Uh, look, Mr. Scott, I can explain that. I don't want any explanations. Just get out of here. Every time you're here, something horrible happens. Like, like last oh, night. Oh, about last night. That's why we came over tonight to apologize for what we did last night. Mr. Scott, do you forgive us? Yes, yes, I forgive you, I forgive you, I forgive you. Now, will you please leave? Oh, yes. Oh, oh, by the way, Scotty, don't make any dates for tomorrow night. Why not? Because tomorrow night we're coming over to apologize for what we did tonight. <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. Have you heard the news? Now you can buy a new RCA Victor Super Set at the lowest price ever. Now you can buy the Colby, for example, a 17-inch table model for only $229.95. Or you can choose the Selfridge Ensemble. It's magnificent 21-inch television at only $379.50. So stop in at your RCA Victor dealers on Monday and see the Colby and the Selfridge and other RCA Victor super sets. They bring you television with picture power. You get clearer, stronger pictures. You get all the performance and quality for which RCA Victor is world famous. And these prices are complete. They include federal excise tax, full year warranty on your picture tube, and no extra charge for your favorite finished mahogany. Yes, everywhere. RCA supersets are priced lower than ever. Get a great new superset made by RCA Victor. And now here's the star of the RCA Victor program. Hello, everybody. This is Dennis Day. First song, I'd like to sing wait for you that old... Wait a minute, Dennis, wait a minute. <laughs> what are you doing? Quiet, please. There's a television show going on here. What television show? This is my radio show. This is just a radio show? <laughs> you mean I'm not being seen? No. Gee, you think I went out and got a poodle haircut. Now, <laughs> look, Dennis, I, I even got a distemper shot. That you can use. Look, kid, the Dennis Day television show for RCA Victor doesn't start until next Friday evening on NBC. Oh, gee, I wouldn't want to miss that. I better hurry home so I can get a good seat in front of my television set. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do that. Look, Dennis, seriously, we all want to wish you all the luck in the world on your opening show on next Friday evening on NBC. And me too. Good night, Dennis. Good night, Dagmar. <laughs> The program is produced and directed by Paul Phillips. Included in today's cast were Lois Corbett, Norma Barton, and Ted Von Ellis. The part of Frankie Remley was played by Elliot Lewis, and Julius was played by Walter Tetley. Remember, whether you're buying a television set, a radio, a Victrola phonograph, or record, put your faith in the cornerstone of American home entertainment for three generations. RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in television. Next, Theatre Guild on the Air, starring The Lunts on NBC.